Hello there. I asked and you delivered. And I am impressed by many of your creations. For those who lack the ability to read the title or just listen to videos at random, in two last videos I asked my viewers to present their homebrews of military units, characters, worlds, whatever they envision, from Warhammer 40k universe, so it could be used in my Damocles Gulf Crusade rewrite. I asked my viewers if they preferred to get a dedicated video about homebrews or see it later in the series, and the majority of you voted to see the homebrews themselves. Most likely wondering what modifications I've made to their creations to fit better with my ideas. Now, I do not have time to present every creation, for which I apologize. I simply have things to do that take priority over the channel as of late. So there will be part 2, maybe more. So if your creation doesn't show up in this video, it will probably show up in the next one. I am unsure if they will be present in the final product, or if I don't make more modifications to them. So, to be clear, not all the lore people came up with will be presented, and some parts will be modified if I decided that one or more parts of the homebrew don't fit together. The second thing is, some people posted more than one homebrew. For this video and the future ones, I present one homebrew per person in each video. So if you made more than one homebrew, they have a chance to show up in the next episodes, but please don't be surprised if they don't, because new homebrews will take priority. Everyone got that? Okay. Before we begin, remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, the whole shtick. You know what to do. With that out of the way, let's get started. The first creation comes from Mitch7235. He came up with an intriguing idea for Space Marine Chapter. The Crimson Dragons. Their symbol is a crimson heater shield with a black dragon in the center. Their war cry is With Emperor, for homeworld and glory, forward! They are a chapter with a mixed gene seed of white scars and imperial fists. They are inspired by the Order of a Dragon that was founded by King Sigismund of Hungary, history of Romania, and of course, Vlad the Impaler. So, a chapter based on culture of Magyars and Hungarians, a quite unique tribe of humanity and very unique culture in Europe. They have Asiatic origins, but aren't really that recognizable as Asians. I think that's how the mix of white scars and imperial fists came to play here. They are a fleet-based, non-codex compliant chapter. They have a certain dominion they protect and keep to it for the most part. They are also quite young chapter, first note of their existence coming from 38th millennium. Another fun fact, they do not use skull iconography as much as other chapters. Instead, they are using a symbol of white cross and imperial aquila. Their culture is very, well, knight-like. Great feasts, challenges, trials, all that jazz. Classic, but with Hungarian theme. 
They are heavily mechanized chapter, having abundance of vehicles. Interestingly, despite having blood of the Khan, they don't really use bikes in combat, preferring to use Astartes vehicles in great numbers. Thanks to close ties with local Mechanicus, they have also access to some rare and ancient Heresy-era vehicles. Similarly to Black Templars, they have greater number of Astartes than 1000, and they don't have scout companies, preferring to do as Black Templars do, and assign a squire to each individual knight. They are also, if you couldn't guess, a chapter that sees God Emperor as a god. As you've noticed, based on art, they have unique helmets and chainmail of all things. The chainmail is important because it's a sign of knighthood in the chapter. Each chainmail needs to be made personally by an Astartes, a slow and grueling process where they are to show their patience and attention to detail. Hmm. That's about it. A heavily mechanized medieval Hungarian night space marine chapter. I think they are quite neat. And I already have an exact idea with what Forge World they will be friends with. Space Marine Hungarian Knights with tanks. It's a wonder how Games Workshop didn't come up with a similar idea before. Anyway, next homebrew. Fedayin Penal Legion. Now, I had to make some big modifications to the original idea made by We Die Standing 948, but I think I kept the baseline idea intact. They are interesting Penal Legion, because while they are somewhat trained, they aren't properly equipped for combat, at least not before being basically in orbit over the world due to the nature of their equipment. You see, when they arrive in orbit, the legionaries are transformed into cyborgs, who got their limbs fused with weapons, usually flamethrowers, grenade launchers, heavy stabbers, and so on. They usually don't get even a proper last gun or other standard weaponry, just makeshift cheap weapons. The transformation occurs so late because the fusions are made in a crude way and lead to infections and death. So for the sake of the regiment having a chance to deploy and actually fight, the transformation occurs in orbit or soon after landing, rather than on the penal colony. An explosive device is implanted into them, and a helmet that blasts them with holy music, drugs and images that are to make them either more obedient or transform into raging berserkers. In short, they are combat servitors, but without getting lobotomized which I think makes them a great unit for morale on any battlefield. Because they are recruiting from everywhere, even fellow regiments that are deployed on the same battlefield. I imagine that simple knowledge that not following orders might not mean death, but being transformed to what amounts to still conscious and self-aware suicide battle servitor makes all regiments in the war zone or so much more enthusiastic about following orders. The regiment have not only a commanding officer and commissar, but also a tech priest that helps with control over the helmets and stimulants blasted into legionaries. An appropriate level of body horror and grim darkness, I think. Next one. Lechian Royal Las Lokiers by Ingenieur TV 
9305. Coming from industrializing feudal world of Lechia, royal Las Lokiers are made of volunteers, abhumans and nobility, with nobility taking role of officers in the ranks. They are, for the most part, light infantry that uses a mix of melee weapons like pikes and chain spears, as well as older variant of Laslock, that lacks the full auto setting, but each shot carries quite a punch. They also deploy different cavalry and abhuman units, many times using exotic mounts like Lechian bears, great bobcats, or even bizarre Lechian basilisks. Their war cry is For the Hob World. Despite somewhat bizarre doctrine and weaponry, they became a celebrated guard regiment. They proved to be quite efficient in fighting orcs and traitors. Their discipline allowing the front ranks equipped with melee weaponry to hold the line in face of the enemy, just as the back rows continue to fire in disciplined volleys. A regiment inspired by Polish traditions and history. Not to mention interesting mix of feudal and industrial bold themes present in one military unit. Next on the list are Daughters of Strife by one and only Marquismo. Again, I've made some changes here, but I think you will like them. Coming from the shrine world of Astfar in Astfaros system, neighboring a civilized world of Ast Prima and Asteli, a homeworld of star executioners Adeptus Astartes chapter. Their system fell victim to the Iron Warriors, who decided to invade the nearby subsector and secure it for their legion. And to do that freely, they decided to cripple the Astfaro system. This included several heretical invasions and even demonic incursions of Nurgle demons caused by cunning warsmiths. After purging the heretical and demonic taint, they wanted to regroup and reorganize only for a significant orc war to attack both Iron Warriors holdings and Astfaros system. With Space Marine Chapter reduced to less than half of their strength, local rulers decided to push for drastic measures. Using above average tech level of the system, a massive enhancement program was introduced. Cybernetic and genetic enhancement became necessity to hold the Orc invasion. With heavy losses, the guard regiments of Astprima and Dutchers of Strife prevailed, even managing to come to the rescue of remaining 48 warriors of Star Executioner chapter. With Orcs vanquished and Iron Warriors crippled by the Xenos, Imperium managed to counterattack and regain lost worlds. Astfaros system, however, changed drastically. Daughters of Strife became dedicated to purging Xenos. Thanks to augmentations they received, they became stronger and faster than average Sister of Battle. The usage of augmentations, controlled breeding and addition of certain hormones to the diet of the population was kept in place. As the entire system was granted five decades to rebuild and reorganize, and be completely free of ties. In this time, a very strong bond solidified between local guard regiments, Sororitas Convent, and Adeptus Astartes chapter. It became a tradition for Canones to be symbolically adopted by the chapter master and be given a right to use Adeptus Astartes weaponry. The same way, the true sibling relation was forged between Sisters of Battle and Space Marines. It's common for them to refer to each other as brother and sister. The local guardsmen are usually referred as 
Little Brothers and Little Sisters. Daughters of Strife sees Primark Gulman, Jean Primark of Star Executioners, as their patron saint, which is the reason why they paint their armor in style of Ultramarines. They receive additional training from Star Executioners and specialists among Asprima Imperial Guard forces. The war cry is Courage and Sacrifice. Their symbol? Ultramarine heraldry placed in the rising sun on a blue background. I think they are super fun and their lore allows me to play around with star executioners and local guard regiments on which I'm still working on. Alright, that's about it. This will end up as first episode out of many, I fear. But eh, such is life. I think this is a nice presentation of different ideas either way. I encourage you to create more homebrews. I ask you to post them under either Gimme Your Homebrews video or the third episode of Damocles Gulf Crusade. Under this video, place comments, questions and criticism in regard of examples above. I think that's it for today. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoyed. Now, my dear, dear listeners, remember, wherever you are, whatever you do, try to enjoy yourself while you can. I wish you most heretical day. Ta-ta!